Hello friends, I'm Ross, founder of Ready to Go Ministries here in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I'm excited about the sermon you're about to see. It's from Psalm 13. It's called, How Long, O Lord, How Long? Have you ever asked the question to God, How Long? Well, if you have, you'll be very encouraged by listening to the sermon. Hope you enjoy it. Also, be encouraged and go to the website at rtgm dot org to check us out to find out what God is doing through the ministry also we're on Facebook as well ready to go ministries on the Facebook page so hopefully somewhere down the road I'll see you if not enjoy the sermon from Psalm 13 how long O Lord how long until then God bless Psalm 13 it's in the Old Testament it's a a great psalm of lament it's a, a psalm that David is is crying out to God and you may have been in that point where you've cried out to God. Yes, 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 yes. And I've, if you've been a Christian long enough, certainly you're going to be crying out to God in times of distress mm -hmm. and of tribulation. Things are not going to go according to plan most times. And this psalm of lament is David's heart, a man after God's own heart that's having difficulty in his life. Have you ever had difficulty in your life? Am I the only one? Only six verses in this psalm, but how powerful it is. It will certainly benefit you if you pay, pay close attention to the words of this psalm. Verse 1, it says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all day long? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Yes. Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. But I have trusted in your loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has been good to me. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the preaching and teaching of your word. We ask you to give us teachable hearts that we may take something away from this passage that we may know you better because of this word. Give me clarity. Give me boldness and confidence in the Holy Spirit. Let me teach it with accuracy and precision, with gentleness and respect. And Father, if there's anyone listening to this message that does not know your Son as their Lord and Savior, let it be today, for today is the day of salvation. We ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Have you ever asked that question to God? Yes. How long yes. must I go through what I'm going through, God? God, how long? It's a rhetorical question, David asked God. He doesn't expect an answer from God. God doesn't owe us an explanation. He does not owe us an answer. Are you with me? Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. God, because of his mercy and grace and because of his salvation he has given us through his son, does not ever owe us an explanation. But David, like you and me, we're real people in real times, in a real world. If you're living in a fantasy world or a fairy tale world, see me after the service because I want to talk to you. I want a life that's all just merry-go-rounds and cotton candy too. But that's not how the world is. And he says, how long, O Lord? He says, will you forget me forever? He's not getting his prayers answered and he's thinking in his mind because of what he's going through that God does not hear him. God does hear us all the time if you're asking God for something through Christ our Lord. Will you forget me forever? See his heart? 
His heart is reaching out to God. It's humble a heart. It's not a demanding heart. He's sincere about it. You know, people that say, well, you just name it and claim it and blab it and grab it, they say it with pride and arrogance. And that's not how God has instructed us in Scripture to go to Him. You may see those people a lot. I ask it a thousand times, God should give me that. That's not true. God wants the best for his children, and we'll see that in Scripture, that he will give David the peace, even though David is having some struggles in his life. Yes, right. yes. Have you had struggles in your life? Yes. How long, O oh Lord? Will you forget me forever? Listen to his heart. God, will you forget me forever? How long, Lord? I'm going through all this pain and this agony and these trials and these tribulations in my life, and it doesn't appear that you're hearing me. And he says it again in verse 1. We're not through the first verse. He says, how long will you hide your face from me? He's in a desperate way, David is. And some people say, well, you know, because you come, become a Christian, then all your problems are going to be solved. That's not true. And a lot of people say, come to Jesus, and he's going to make everything better for you. So you know what happens? People come to Jesus for that motive, and it doesn't turn around for them. And then they slide back to the way it was because they came to Jesus for the wrong motives. They came to Jesus for a Cadillac. They came to Jesus for a bigger house. And so you may have come to Jesus and Jesus didn't answer all these prayers all at one time and you may be bitter about not having any changes in your life. Well, Jesus died to save us from our sins and the consequences of sins and the power and the penalty of sins. Isn't that enough? Or do you need something else? Jesus is not the Santa Claus Jesus. Oh my. And, and David's saying, how long will you hide your face from me? God has been out of the, the picture in his mind for a long time. So don't be discouraged, my friend. When you think that God has been out of your picture for a while, just keep on saying, how long? He'll come around with the answer. It may not be like you think it would be. How long, oh Lord? How long do I have to stay where I'm staying? How long do I have to put up with my whatever it is I'm putting up with? How long is this disease or this sickness going to be in my body? How long, oh Lord, how long? It's a good question, isn't it? I can just live in that question. How long, Lord? And God is not obligated to say, Ross, I'll get back with you in a little while. Oh. You mean God is not on your beck and call? Some people think he is. It's encouraging. Because this psalm in six verses, it goes from turmoil to tranquility. Don't you like tranquility? Oh, yeah. There's those moments in life when you know the God of the universe and you know his Son is your Savior and Lord, and the storms are raging around you, but through Christ you can have peace that passes all understanding. Not necessarily the storm will go away. Not necessarily the illness in my body will go away. Not necessarily my finances will improve, but I can have peace because I know what my destination is. I know where I'm going when I die. And Lord, if you want to take me today, take me on. From turmoil, he, he's in turmoil, but at the end of this psalm, he's going to experience tranquility. But nothing's changed in his life, physically. Oh, what do you mean you can experience tranquility and things are just the same? Yes, because peace with God is not anything to do with the outward circumstances of your life. And some people say, well, I ain't, nothing's changed. The things are still the same. God must not be operating in my life. You hadn't allowed him. You haven't come before him with humility and brokenness over sin. You haven't asked him to use you because he can use you right where you are no matter where you are in life. How long, oh Lord? From turmoil to tranquility. 
Yes, Lord, tranquility is around the corner for you, and it's around the corner for me. It might not be when you want it, but it's going to happen if you know Christ. Amen. And that's through the storms. The peace is through the storms of life. When things are crushing up around you, they're all crashing in. The waves are crashing in. The lightning and the thunder are still in the sky, but I can have peace that's beyond my comprehension. When somebody comes to you and says, I know you're a Christian, but things are collapsing all around you, but you have this un undescribable peace about you. That's the testimony of the Lord. That's how God is glorified. It's not the Cadillac in the driveway or the big house or the fancy clothes. And that's why if you watch Christian TV, mostly that's what you'll see. It's all about the bling. Oh, Jesus has been good to me, pointing at watches and stuff. <laughs> Blasphemy teaching. Amen. Blasphemous. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, I'll walk and you'll walk if you're a Christian on streets of gold. Why would we care about a bling here on earth when it's all going to deteriorate anyway? Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. And you may have had that in your life one time. You know, lots of zeros behind your bank account. Well, zeros will go in a heartbeat. Lots of zeros and you only got one. <laughs> Lord, what happened with my zeros? How long, oh Lord? <laughs> Tranquility will happen. Tranquility will happen. But in the meantime, are you serving him? Or are you just asking him for stuff? Jesus had no place to lay his head. The foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man, he created the universe, has no place to lay his head. What do we ever have to complain about? I don't get along well with complainers. Especially you can flip on the TV and find out what real suffering is. There are some people that are suffering in a big, big way. That a glass of water is a big, big deal. Lord, help me never to complain about my situation. So he's gone from turmoil to tranquility. He's gone from perplexity, and he'll go to praise. Remember that, perplexity. Oh, anxiousness. Oh, so, my life is so complicated. It's perplexed, but he's going to go to praise. And the victory in your life, if you're a Christian, is to be able to praise God and open up your hands to God and surrender when you're going through perplexity. Oh, my, my. Turmoil to tranquility, from perplexity to praise, from sinking to singing. Because the psalm ain't over, and I'm having a hard time getting out of the first verse. I'm glad it's not 26 verses. It's only six. Burning in the heart. It's got to burn in your heart. Hopefully it is. How long? 